Hope you guys are ready for another episode of Double D's <laughs> in your face. That's right. We could talk about uh, uh, the, the most recent UFC show that took place. Um, we can talk about just, uh, you know, uh, what you're up to, or, you know, because I know that you were, you actually were at the show, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. I was kind of thought, thought they might actually show you, but uh, they showed a lot of different uh, fighters in the crowd. But were you secluded? Were you incognito? Yes, I was hiding. I was, I was hiding up in the rafters. Oh. So you're up, up, up in the nosebleed section, so they really took care of you, right? I had a broom and a mop, and you know, yeah, cover coveralls, and yeah. yep, just scooting along right there. And yeah. back in the day, <laughs> well, what were you doing there, Don? Well, what the fuck business is that of yours? <laughs> Well, not for so me. Jump in here and so say like you own the show or something like that. Well, no, I mean we're trying to keep. We just got to keep. Well, I mean, is this something? Is this something that you could talk about at all? I mean, because we don't want to cry. I hope so, because we uh, they paired me up with a real pretty gal from Britain, um, Claire. I know she was a professional athlete. Yeah, and uh, anyway, she she's been working for them for ten years over there in Great Britain, and they brought her over here to. See if uh, she can teach me how to eat with a fork, you know. Wow, oh, I'll tell you that. I mean, uh, just says that's a lost cause right now. Is yeah, Pierce, huh? Pierce, Pierce, yes, yeah, okay. So, Caroline Pierce, Caroline Pierce, yeah. So, it looks like they made the pick it up uh, the things you used to do before. I don't know, uh, it's it just predator. depends on how the numbers come in this week. Oh, okay. So, so everybody needs to go out to the fight pass and watch uh, tea and whiskey with Don Fry. Yeah. He's, oh, that okay. Is that what the segment's called now? Tea and whiskey. Yep. Yes, tea sir. and whiskey. Yes, sir. Yep. With Caroline. Pierce oh, okay. Now that makes Fry. sense because her being from England, tea, tea crumpets. Yeah. Tea yep. and whiskey. Gotcha. Man, you you're smarter on you look. <laughs> well, I said thank <laughs> God for that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and you guys are just doing predictions and about talking about the fight card. No, we just talk about everything. Talk about you know how. A fight will, will prepare for a fight, you yeah. know, um, how the training goes, how the food, nutrition goes, you know, and I just talk about all aspects of just it. everything going on in the MMA world. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, I, I watched it. It was good, man. You were cracking me up. Oh, yeah. yeah, you just right out the gate, you're calling her octopus arms. <laughs> just can't keep her hands off me. I don't think she appreciated it. Yeah, yeah, she she was funny because she even just like, um, that wasn't in the script. <laughs> she didn't know what to say. Well, just because you're such a professional, Mr. Fry, you know when to improv. You know, only the greats know that kind of stuff. True, that's true. Yeah, yeah. see, I need you should you need to keep that set just as as your prop man there. To, oh, need, need to do need, need a cute cue there. To, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring, bring me a golf club. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, so, so yeah, it was a good show. I liked it. I hope they uh, pick it up for more episodes. Yeah, I hope so, cool like too. I said, everybody well, out there can just go watch the UFC Fight Pass, tea and whiskey. Give yeah. it, tell them we need more episodes. Absolutely. Yes, that would be great. To, great to see Mr. Fry doing that because that was great when it was uh, uh, the Predators' predictions. Predators' predictions. So to me, it's like the same carry on, but uh, I think it'll have a little bit more. Eloquence and spice to it there. Just, you know, same, colli same colliding worlds. Yeah. <laughs> Civilization and unruliness all, all intertwined. Yes. Okay, let, let's talk about UK. You did watch the show. You were you actually you were there at the show. Yes, sir. Um, I actually was actually watching the show myself, which is probably the first time in a long time I actually watched one. And uh, I'll just say out of the main card, the, the two wrestlers prevailed and they, they made rather quick work yeah, of their... Did. Yeah, of their uh, opponents. I mean, you had uh, the wrestler there from the Penn State, uh, Bo uh, Nickel. Bo Nickel. That I mean, he really doesn't ha does not have that many matches thus far. But no, he, and he went straight to a pay per view main card. Like that's awesome. Yeah. And but uh, I mean, he, he, ha he has the accolades though. I mean, what he's accomplished in his college career. Yeah, what, what only, him and only Askren. Well, what was it? The he's a three time national yeah. champ, and he won the uh, Danny Hodge Award. Yep. Yep. Yeah, which are very prestigious awards. I mean, that's uh, that's no easy task for what he what he did there. And but to, to me, he's doing wrestling proud by 
did he really have to throw any strikes whatsoever? No, not really. No. Again, just he, he, but, but I, I, I bet he did keep his hands up nice and high, kept his hands up high in case someone was a strike in so he could parry strikes. But, uh, you know, as I've been saying for quite a few years, I mean, my, my own strategy after I watched the very first UFC was, well, a striker has to be with it. Arms reach to punch, legs range to kick, knee elbow. I kept thinking, well, if I just stay slightly outside of range, they throw something when they recoil it back, move on into either flinches, takedowns, or jam them up against that cage. Well, in the moment just you've done one of those three things, you've neutralized 90 plus percent of a striker's arsenal. And, and from a grappler's perspective, you're just commencing because you got them in that clinch, and now you can do all kinds of things. And even, uh, uh, Randy uh, showed there about the dirty boxing and all that. Uh, so, you know, he's really good at striking and then getting those clinches and uh, showing what, again, what it's all about from a wrestler's perspective. Yep. Yeah, he put on a good show. It was awesome to see him just come out and dominate. That, that's what you wanted to see. He lived right, he, he lived up to the hype. Yep. Yep. You think that um, he deserved a shot at the belt already? No, no. no. It's too green. Yeah. Too green. No, I kind of agree with what Don's saying right now. They should uh, get him a little bit more, a few more matches, let him season in there a little bit more, and then almost get to the point where fans are demanding it. But, uh, you know, yes, he's got some great wrestling accolades, but let's let him take care of a few more people first and, uh, you know, have him earn you know, he's used to earning his position in, in the world of wrestling he can earn his uh, same position in the mma world a, as well so yeah they move him on too fast you know and he gets that that loss there goes the mystique you know yeah and everything yeah so yep. they, they, they can't really just you know don't call him and carry him along but i mean they need to be smart about it you know, no, okay let's let's jump over to the other match here real quick with the john John Jones and gone right there. What uh, going into the fight? What what were you what were your thoughts about that one? Just before the fight ever took place, just well, knowing what their both backgrounds were in that. I thought it was going to take about that long. Yeah. <laughs> probably, oh really? Yeah, it probably went twice as long as what I thought. But gone looked scared getting out of the vehicle. You know, when he come through the arena, they showed him. You know, he 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 wasn't he wasn't only prepared for to fight Jones. And I don't know why, because you know, I mean, he does have a good fight pedigree, but he just he just wasn't wasn't prepared. Well, again, he he fought the Gato, correct? Right. And they, they had a pretty good battle there. I mean, because I did not watch that that fight. Mm, no, I mean, the Ganyu the Ganyu won that fight. He controlled Gan. He was a better all around fighter on that one. Okay, but did they go the full five rounds, or did they get stopped short? Or no, I think it went the decision. Oh, okay. Well, again, it just again shows that at least it showed that God's got the uh, you know has a cardiovascular endurance. He's got a striking ability because that's what I would say. Well, they both stood there and looked at each other for most of the fight. Yeah, it wasn't very. Uh, it wasn't an act. Wasn't very fight. epic. Oh, yeah. I see. Huh. Yeah. And then and then just from God, John's John Jones, I think he would take out Naganya. The way that he just let us, I don't know if he could, Nagani could beat him. Oh, well. Um, Yeah, but Jones came out and just, I think the only time he got hit was when Gon kicked him in the balls. Yeah. Right out, right out, well, like, I think it was like the first 10 seconds. I'll take the starch out of you, you know, yeah. shit, slow you down. <laughs> but yeah, then he came out and then <laughs> he just gave up his, he took him down, dominated the whole match. He couldn't, he, he couldn't not get him off of him, took him down, smothered him. Choked him out quick. Yeah, no, that was. I thought he did a good job there. From again, from the grappler's perspective, of uh, they're not paying you by the hour out there. It's just piecework. Whether you get it done in the opening 10, 20 seconds, uh, they they still pay the same. Or if you have to go five rounds, yeah. I say get it, get it done a little bit sooner. That way you don't take uh, that much wear and tear, and uh, say keep yourself fresh for whatever's coming next. Nope. So, what do you think about his? Uh... All time, the the goat status for him now. People say now he's got the number one ranking again. Oh, of course, they're gonna say that. What else are you gonna say? Yeah, I mean, come on. I I think, I think um the two Nogara brothers are you know one of the greatest fighters. Yeah, you know at the heavyweight and light heavyweight division it was 
they had real competition over Japan as opposed to here. Yeah, that he doesn't. Who's who does he fight? Yeah, who who's giving right. him a challenge? Right. There's no one. And then even now, Stipe, like that's that's the next challenge. I don't know if I think, uh, Joe, I think Stipe should be able to win. He's just um, you know, it's all gonna come down to the footwork, which Stipe has none. You know, and uh, you know the training training s- sessions. So, you know, he's going to get his conditioning up more and uh, learn how learn how to sail the balls of his feet and, and move. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a dominant performance, definitely. It's getting he and he's looks big, like like Jones. Like it's crazy. Like he looks big, like and not like. It looks like he even spent some time at the Dan Severn buffet line. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, yeah. I don't know if you should give that much credit there, Don. Come on, now. that's uh, it's awful boastful talking there now. <laughs> uh, oh, well, definitely, I'm excited to see him fight Stipe. Hopefully, we get to see that. Next yeah, they were, they were both there in attendance. Uh, and, and, well, obviously, and it was looked like their acknowledgement when the camera was going back and forth. So. You know, it it just it, it you know like Dad was saying, it just all depends on what uh, what happens in their training camps and really the kind of game plan that you put together. You know, you can really you know, you, you can take somebody out with a good just a good game plan in itself, something that people aren't used to to seeing. So, but you know, as you were asking her before, there, uh, Tony, should uh, John Jones really get that goat status? Sure, he should. I mean, it's a uh, it's it's his time. It's like Everyone has their day in the sun. Don had his day in the sun. I had my day in the sun. You know, right now it's his day in the sun. He, you know, he had a couple year layoff. He came back and he won and he did it in quick work. Uh, didn't take any kind of uh, uh, damage whatsoever. And he you know, fresh as the days. He can can go again. So, sure, give him give him his accolades. What we're, we're you know we're, we're due, and then the, we'll see how he performs at the next one. Then, then everyone else could be the armchair quarterbacks at that point in time to say, well, he didn't do this right or he did this one wrong or or whatever. So that's all we're doing. Just it's a lot of just purely speculation on our part because we're not part of the training camp. I actually kind of thought that Joe's looked a little bit more on, on the soft side. I actually thought he looked better in shape when he was leader, you know, fighting for the uh, at, at the lighter weight class. But yeah. you know, he did he did put on a few more of those pounds there to get up to a heavyweight class. Yep. That's what yep. you got. That's what you got to do to get up there. You got to stuff the old pillow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so Naganyu sent out a tweet saying, uh, like, you know, giving him a congratulations, but he says a uh, sign from the heavyweight King, you know, it's like calling himself the heavyweight King. Yeah. And Jones pretty much, you know, called him a pussy. <laughs> said like he'd fuck him up. Would you guys would you guys want to see that fight? Yeah, it'd be interesting to see that fight. You think there's a chance of that of him coming back and it happening? Naganyu? No. He's in his take with the boxing for a little while. Yeah, until he gets enough money saved up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, all I'm gonna take is one or two good fights, you know, against uh, Tyson Fury, and then he's set for life. Yeah. Yep, he'll make more money in those than he did his whole career. Right. Yep. Yeah, do you think that it was so it was smart for him to to take not accept the contract they offered him? I don't know what contract they offered him. Yeah, I don't. I mean, there wasn't a. They said it was supposedly more than uh, they offered Brock. It was supposed to be the biggest contract that they've offered anybody. You know, but he turned it down for like you know. He, I mean, I don't think what he was asking for was unreasonable. Asking for health insurance and you know, right. things like that. You know, right. I don't think that and be able to have a little more freedom to go fight. You know, other you know go do boxing or something if he wanted to. But that, yeah, I don't think the UFC is actually giving anybody that kind of uh, well, yeah, free uh, freelance type ability. Once they have you, they want to, they kind of want to have you solely theirs. And uh, which, I mean, honestly, unless they're paying you not to go and do things, I mean, it's uh, uh, they either up the ante to to know that uh, you know there are there are other, other opportunities they could go to. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll go back to when I was working for the National Wrestling Alliance, NWA, professional wrestling company, working for WWF at the time. 
and working for any other promotion that would book me because first off, NWA was trying to make me exclusive. I'm going, no, can't do that unless you want to pay me on the weekends that I'm sitting that you want me to sit home because if I have an opportunity to go go off this weekend, boom, I'm going to go off this weekend and uh, work for other companies. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to drop the strap to some scrub or something like that to uh, tarnish the title or something like that. I'll make sure that I protect myself in those aspects. But uh, I'll say I was a little too young and maybe naive in my professional career to know how much creativity I I had over it. You know, when the WWF you know pitched me the idea of you know going from a baby face portrayal to more of a heel portrayal and wanting to do six six across my forehead. You know, Mark of the Beast, I'm like going, I just flat out just said, I, I flat out refused. Now, that wasn't going to happen no matter what. So uh, that was uh, just something different. And uh, I'll just say, I wish I would know more about the industry because I, I might have been able to offer up something different and would have been able to stay with them for maybe another couple of years beyond what I did stay for. So, yeah, I would say they didn't, they didn't know how to use you there, Dan. They... Well, yeah, I, again, it was a, I was the precursor to a Brock Lesnar coming in. And when Brock came in, they had a little bit more, they had a little bit more tutelage because they did work with uh, Ken Shamrock. They did work with myself. Yeah. And so they knew that there's other opportunities that they could do with people from the mixed martial arts world and also professionals in the world. So again, I just, I think they were just solely looking from their angle and worried if, if, if we do put a strap on this person, you know, what controlling elements do we have over them? You know, other than the contract, which all depends what the contract's worth as to do you break it and go to another company because it's financially more rewarding. Yep. Yeah, you got to do what's best for you. Yep. Yep. So what what do you guys um, get your thoughts on the Shashenko fight in Grasso? What did you think about that? Do you think that Shashenko was winning that fight before she got choked out? Uh, no. I would hope she was. Well, I, yeah. I think she was. Looked like she was. She just got her ass caught. You know? Yeah. Did, did a no, she. I thought she was doing a great job in, in that match. And she, and just like I said, she did get caught. You know, the uh, she was doing a good job striking. Uh, she, she did a very good job. I mean, it would, when she was caught, I mean, it, they, you know, her opponent had it sunk mighty deep, and uh, I'm like going, uh, that that's it. And I don't see her coming out of this one at all. And just. A few seconds later, boop, the old tap was covered. So, yep, yeah, it was funny when and Joe and them were cracking up after she let go. They were like, "Looks like she has a sunburn on the top of her head." It was beat like just beat red, and the rest of her was white underneath, like her by her mouth and where she had her arm wrapped around her, and she had that sunk in. Yeah, that's that's, no, it. It, that's three Mexican champs now. <laughs> Hi, caramba. I mean, how many more belts can they steal? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, again, well, how long have they had? How long is the, the UFC they they do have, or they are breaking ground on uh, a UFC center. performance center down there? But I don't know if it's up and functioning or or if it's just being constructed. I think it's still being built. I think it's under construction still in Mexico. Yeah, it, yeah, in Mexico, the city or um. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm not sure exactly where they're building it. Well, I think they're looking at trying to put one almost on each continent, aren't they? I mean, I think they talked about doing something in. Well, they got one in China. You know, so I, I you know, that, that that's that's all done. So we got Vegas, China. I think where else do they have one that's established? But I mean, to me, it's a smart on their, on their behalf, so they can bring athletes in on close proximities, and again, educate them on a lot of the things of health and wellness and taking care of the bodies and uh they probably have a lot better care at that facility than they'll get in their outlying areas that that they are coming from so i would assume so scout them out real easy too yeah no there's 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 still a lot of talent uh out on the the market there i mean it's uh you know you see moving in the right direction because of uh you know, getting on more athletes from other countries to realize, you know, look, look at where, where you can get from, uh, uh, golly, uh, Khabib, uh, you know, we never think someone would come in from, uh, his remote corner of the world, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so you know, again, they, they still have, you know, look at Mongolians, Bulgarians, uh, Turks, 
you know, there's some really uh, savage competitors out there, you know, yeah. just knowing them from the, the world of amateur wrestling, you know, yeah. and seeing how wrestlers are still doing well. And I get, I, I, I'm not that I'm, I'm getting on the wrestler soapbox, but uh, it makes my heart do good when I start seeing another wrestler that knows enough, keep their hands up, parry a few punch strikes and know that you didn't score on yours. Now it's a, it's a, it's a chess match yeah. where checkmate just happens to hurt a little bit. <laughs> Even if you have to get a bit of choke and maybe palm their head a few times or hammer strike it or something like that, just to get turned a little bit more so you can <laughs> sink it on in. Yeah. A few little love taps there. That's not the personal. That's the personal. I just I want that bigger paycheck. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so the next one. I could I could send you I could send you a get well card afterwards. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy you a beer. <laughs> Thank you for watching another episode of Double D's in your face. You better like, subscribe, and share, or I'm going to come to your house.